Hello, in this video we're going to be creating and assembling some basic components to create a simple um, wooden frame stool. So once we've opened Fusion, if we give our file a name by clicking the save icon, um, what we're going to do is we start off by creating some sketches on the bottom plane. And these are going to be um, the profile of our timber pieces. So if we click 20 and then the tab button to move to the um, width to put 32 and finish sketch. Um, we can then extrude to a new component. And we're going to extrude this to 250 millimeters. Then we're going to create an identical one next to it. These are going to be the first two legs of our stool. Same size, 20 by 32. Then extrude it to 250. We're then going to rename our components um, so we know what each one is. So we're going to create our first joint. So if we sketch on the surface of our plank of wood, or what will be our plank of wood, and we're going to take a 32 by 32 square off the top to make our halving joint. So we're going to extrude that back into the joint by 10 millimeters. And that's the first part of our halving joint. So make sure it says cut. OK. We're going to do exactly the same on the opposite leg. Next, we're going to add the mortises for our bottom rail. So using the grid, we're going to find 75 millimeters up from the bottom and draw a um, rectangle that is 5 mil in from each side, um, 22 tall and 10 wide, and then do the same on both legs. You could, of course, do these separately, but it makes sense to do them both at the same time. So once we've drawn those, we can extrude those in 10 millimeters, so minus 10, to create our mortises. So next we're going to create our next couple of pieces of um, timber, so our top and our bottom rails. So we go the same size, 20 by 32, and then extrude that out. This one's going to be extruded to um, 200 millimeters. New component. Rename that to the top rail. And then we're going to create our joints on the top and bottom so they fit in with our halving joints on the legs. So 32 mil square, 32 mil square at the bottom. Finish sketch and then we can extrude those minus 10 and we have our third piece. So we can now use the inspect tool to measure the distance between the two joints there, that's 136 mil. Remember that for our next piece. So when we create our bottom rail, we're going to start off by sketching the same profile size as before, so 20 by 32 mil. 20, tab 32, enter, finish sketch. Then we're going to extrude that one up. We said it was 136 between the joints. We need to add in an extra 10 mil on either end, so it's 156 to allow room for our tenons. And then finish that up onto a new component. So next we're going to create our tenons. So if we sketch on the end of our bottom rail, and we're just going to create an offset that's minus 5 to follow the outside of that rectangle. Click OK. And then we can extrude that down by 10 mil. So minus 10. And that's going to cut. And then we're going to do exactly the same on the opposite side.
And there we have our four components. Now we want two sets of each of these. So if we press shift and select all four, click on move copy, create copy. Make sure that's checked. And then drag a set away from there. So if we see 100 mil away, click on OK. And we've got our second set. Now, because they're copies, if we make any changes to any of these, it'll also um, make the same change on its copy. So if we right click on the component and change our appearance, we can give it an appearance of a material. So I'm going to choose some solid woods. This gives you a more realistic grain on all surfaces. Um, you might have to download the option you want first, so click on the download icon. And then once it's downloaded, we can just drag it and drop it. You notice if I change the material on one of the pairs, it'll automatically change on the other pair as well because they're two copies of the same component. So there we have our pine effect. Next, we're going to um, start assembling them. So if we click on the joint, we can choose that surface there or that line there and attach it to that line there. We want those two to line up. Okay. First joint line, make sure it's rigid, which it is. Then we're going to attach our second leg to the top rail. So we click on joint again. Choose our first area. So if we click on that surface, the middle of that surface. Now this time it's upside down, which is fine. We can just rotate it 180 degrees and then click OK. There's our second joint. And then we're going to do the same for our mortis and tenon joint on our bottom rail. Again, we can flip it so it's the right way around. That's good. And then we can do exactly the same capture position on the other A frame. So we have our two sides of our stool frame. So if we save our changes, it's always good practice to do that along the way. We can add in a description so we can see um, what's going on in that version. If we go back through our changes, we're going to create a sketch and create our side rails. So if we create a sketch on the bottom plane again, so the same profile as the other pieces, so 20mm tab. 32 mil, okay, and then finish sketch, and we're going to extrude that up by 300 mil. Now I've accidentally um, extruded that as a body, but we can change that. So if we go to bodies, find the body that we've just created, and then we can create component from body, and that's now a component. So I can rename that to side rail. And then we can make some copies. If you want three of those. Now remember any change I make to the original will also um, appear on the other two copies. So we're going to create our dowel joint. So if we create a sketch on the end of one of our rails, zoom in so we've got the nice fine grid. Um, we want to put a circle. So we find the middle of that and then the middle of the side. We can extrude those lines or follow those lines out. It'll find the center of our rectangle. We want a 6mm diameter circle. So that's fine. Finish sketch. And then we can extrude that down by 15 mil, so minus 15, and if we click OK, we see that that's actually appeared on all three rails there because they're copies of each other. So then we're going to do exactly the same on the other end.
So we are then going to create our dowels in the same way. So if we sketch on the bottom plane a 6 millimeter diameter circle, and then we can extrude those up. We're going to extrude them up to 30 mil. New components, call that a dowel. And then we can copy those across so we have six of them. We can then create a joint to assemble the dowels into each one of the holes on the ends of the side rail. Then repeat that with each dowel in each end of the side rails. Grabbing the centre of each dowel and lining it up with the entrance to each dowel hole. So it's half in, half out. Next we can create the holes for our dowels to fit into on our A-frames. So if we draw a sketch on our first leg, we want to know where to put this position this circle. So if we start by drawing a rectangle, we want it to be um, 21 millimeters down and 12 across, and that's going to be the center of our circle, so our 6 mil circle. We can now delete our rectangle because we don't want that anymore. We have just the circle. <coughs> Click on Finish Sketch, and we can now just extrude that in by 15 mil with a cut operation. And we have our first dowel hole. We can then repeat that on the other leg. Notice because they're copies that the same hole will appear on the other A frame. So if we turn it around, we can see the other hole is already there because it's a copy. So we can do the same on this leg. And then finally, our dowel hole in the bottom rail. So if we find the centre of the top and then the centre of the side, it'll automatically find the middle of that rectangle. We want our 6mm diameter hole. So 6mm. Finish sketch. And then again, we can extrude that in by 15mm. So minus 15. And this time, We've got the other hole there, but actually we want it on the other side. So we need to amend our joint. What I've done is I've accidentally placed the, the bottom rail on the other A-frame um, you know, the wrong way around. So if we can click on our joints, we can edit joints. And then if I undo remove the snap on the second component. I can see that I've selected the edge there, so I'm going to select this edge rather than the other side. So what we do now is we select, you can see that edge there. You can see it goes in the other way. And now we have the hole on the right side of each A-frame, so they're opposites of each other. And now we can start assembling our side rails to our A-frame. So taking that joint there, to that component there, I'm going to flip it and then we want to turn it 90 degrees so it's the correct position. And we can click OK and then do the same with the other rails.
And then the final part of the frame assembly, we can create a joint between. We need to do one of these because the other ones will line up automatically. So we can create a joint between that dowel hole and the centre of that dowel there. As we move it across, the rest of the A-frame will come across when I click OK, because they're all connected. So let's click OK. And you'll see, and now we have our completed assembly. So finally, we're going to create our seat. So if we sketch on the top surface of that rail, we're going to create a rectangle. If we zoom in. See it from the top. We can zoom in so we've got our nice fine grid. A bit further, we can see our fine millimeter grid now. So I'm going to start my rectangle level with the edge of the A frame, and we should be 300 wide and 250 across. Oh, 250, it should be 200, sorry. So what we can do is we can change that to 200 by double clicking on it. There we go. Um, finish sketch, and now we can extrude. Make sure we get the whole surface. Our new component up. Name that seat. We're going to round off the edges using a fillet tool. So pick the edges you want to round, and then we can just push them in by a 10 mil radius. And click OK. And then we can assign our material. So we're going to give that a fabric appearance. So if we close up the woods, we don't want those anymore. Let's go to leather and cloth. I'll just go with the blue cloth. And you'll see there's a grain of the cloth there. So you can see the woven effect. And we have our finished school. Save it, and we're done.